Australia and India, at their heart, are both ancient and modern countries and cultures. India's proud history extends far, far beyond the 75 years of independence. Indeed, one of the world's most ancient and sophisticated civilizations, India has long been a cradle of humanity's shining achievements, a rich and diverse culture that has survived many challenges over the last millennium as it continues to do today. Similarly, Australia's history stretches back tens of thousands of years, long before the formation of our modern nation, 120 years ago. Australia's Indigenous peoples are custodians of one of the oldest continuing civilizations in the world. Some archaeological and genetic evidence indicates that our connection started millennia ago with studies suggesting that people of Indian origin visited the continent we now call Australia more than 4,000 years ago. Jumping forward to the 20th century, the engagement of our countries was much shaped by our membership of the Commonwealth of Nations. During World Wars I and II, Australian and Indian troops fought side by side to protect the international order, the values and the freedoms that we continue to believe in firmly today. Australia took a positive stand on decolonisation in Asia, including attending the 1949 New Delhi Conference on Indonesia, which, is, which contributed to the independence of our other close regional partner uh, that I've also visited this week, as Sanjoy said. And since India's independence, Generations of Australians have, have admired the bold nation-building project begun by Gandhi, Nehru, Patel and Ambedkar and continued by their successors up to Prime Minister Modi. This project has not only seen India grow and modernise as a nation, but also take its place as a major global power of real and positive consequence. The opening of India's economy in the 1990s heralded a new era of opportunity for Australia and for our region. India's influence has been extraordinary, from faith to food, from film to fashion. Indian culture and heritage have been embraced and celebrated across the world. The contribution of the Indian diaspora has strengthened the fabric of communities around the globe including in Australia, and in fact, I would say particularly in Australia. I'm both a resident and a representative of Western Sydney. I'm very proud of the indispensable role that Australians of Indian descent, Indian migrants and Indian students play in modern Australia, and particularly in my part of modern Australia. Today, under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and my good friend and counterpart, the Minister for External Affairs, India is showing its leadership in contributing to a peaceful, secure and prosperous region. It's certainly an exciting time to witness the continued rise of a new India, a country that is both ancient and modern, confident, aspirational, vibrant and tech savvy, and of course, a country that is proudly democratic, outward looking, and a leading Indo-Pacific power. The heritage, the history that Australia and India share, grounded in common values, has paved the way for a shared vision of our region. From the most fundamental perspective of geography, our countries are the northern and eastern anchors of the Indian Ocean. The Northeast Indian Ocean is home to major maritime thoroughfares and we share deep interests in its stability. But the commonality of our vision is founded on more than shared history or geography. Our contemporary strategic and economic interests in the region are very much aligned. The direction of Australia's economic interests in our region was historically northern. But our modern Indo-Pacific vision has us looking to our western horizon across the Indian Ocean as well, 
recognising India's pivotal role to the wider region. This expansive view of our region has never been more important as the Indo-Pacific faces significant challenges. The most immediate of these is, of course, COVID-19, which has had significant impacts on the health, the development, the economic prosperity of every country in our region. All Australians watched with heartfelt concern as India responded to the serious surge of COVID-19 this year. Just as we know Indians did when Australia faced terrible bushfires last year, with citizens and communities fundraising and donating in support. Vaccines provide great hope for a return to normal and I want to acknowledge the particularly important role that India has played in this area. India has made impressive progress in manufacturing and distributing vaccines. And we, continue to, we look forward to continuing to working with India and of course other quad partners to expand access to COVID-19 vaccines in the Indo-Pacific. COVID-19 has also increased economic uncertainty and deepened risks of recession and protectionism. It's exacerbated pressure on rules, norms and institutions. It's fueled dangerous disinformation. It's affected supply chains. And as we respond to these impacts of the pandemic, we're also grappling with existing and longer term challenges. The impact of climate change, to which our region is highly vulnerable. Transnational crime, the persistent threat of terrorism. We face cyber, and critical technologies challenges and emerging threats to our security, including, as I said, from dangerous disinformation. What Australia and India particularly share is a vision of the Indo-Pacific region that is open and inclusive and resilient, a region in which states cooperate and resolve differences based on international rules and norms. I also reiterated Australia's commitment to this vision of the region in my discussions with Indonesian counterparts this week. It is, whether through the work we do with key partners, through the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific, it's a genuinely shared vision, even if we each have our own language to describe it. We seek a region in which the rights of all states, large and small, are respected with a strategic balance in which no single dominant power dictates outcomes for others. It's a principle expounded by Minister Jashanko when he drew parallels with, and I quote, India's own pluralistic and complex history, which indicates the natural state of the world is multipolarity, unquote. As proud democracies, values like freedom and openness are vital to Australians and to Indians. They're part of what makes our vibrant countries successful. They equip our countries to respond to global and regional challenges and to engage and cooperate with others. We look for opportunities to come together to have disputes, disputes resolved peacefully. Australia stands with India and the vast majority of others in the region in opposing, destabilising or escalatory actions. We agree that the rules and norms and habits of cooperation must be at the centre of our region's strategic culture, not a might is right mentality or coercive tactics. Consequently, we acknowledge and commend India under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi for taking a strong regional leadership role. Australia is working with India through regional fora, including the Indian Ocean Rim Association, the East Asia Summit, trilateral arrangements, Australia and India with Indonesia, Australia and India with France, Australia and India with Japan. We are working on a practical, positive regional agenda through the Quad, including most recently and importantly at leader level, to help realise our vision of an open, prosperous and resilient Indo-Pacific where all nations are sovereign. The Quad has evolved swiftly and I think very effectively 
over the past two years. Since our first ministerial level meeting, September two years ago, between Minister Jashanka and me, along with Japan's Foreign Minister Motegi and then US Secretary of State Pompeo. It is a thoroughly contemporary grouping, a diplomatic network of countries that engages flexibly and practically with the clear purpose of enhancing stability and prosperity by meeting challenges quickly and nimbly. Whether that is, in the most recent discussions, the provision of COVID-19 vaccines, cooperation on supply chains whose vulnerability has been exposed by the pandemic, the impact of climate change, or responding to disinformation disseminated to exploit strategic advantage during COVID-19. The Quad is the kind of innovative diplomacy we need in the 21st century, when we're grappling with disruption across a range of fronts, from transgressions of international rules and norms to the massive impact of frontier technologies. This strategic competition arising amidst this disruption compels countries like India and Australia, who value freedom and openness and sovereignty, to participate in and shape our region. We all have a role to play in a future region in which the natural multipolarity that Dr. Joshanka espoused finds a peaceful and prosperous balance because we respect each other's sovereignty. Australia is confident about our role in such a region, and it is obvious that India is a natural leader within the rules-based system. We welcomed India's chairing of the United Nations Security Council debate on maritime security last month, the first of its kind, which brought countries together to underline the central role of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. India has shown their practical initiative in the same context through the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, the IPOI, which was announced by Prime Minister Modi at the 2019 East Asia Summit. Australia is very proud to be partnering with India in leading the marine ecology pillar of the initiative, contributing our own experience and expertise in managing marine plastics, a pressing challenge for many countries in our region. I was pleased to announce the start of our practical cooperation under this initiative at the Indo-Pacific Business Summit in July. That one was online, of course. Australia, Australia's leading scientific research organisation, the CSIRO, is forming a knowledge partnership with India's National Centre for Coastal Research. There is great scope for enhanced cooperation in this area, particularly given the individual and personal passions for these issues of both Prime Ministers Modi and Morrison. And that's why the Australian government also recently announced funding for joint Australia-India research to support Prime Minister Modi's vision for the IPOI. Further to that, I'm pleased to announce tonight that Australia will contribute $10 million to the India-led Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and $1 million to the India-led International Solar Alliance. Building on India's leadership and on Australia's role in the Pacific, and I welcome Sanjoy's uh, reference to the Pacific Step Up, this commitment includes a technical assistance facility for small island developing states, helping them to plan for systemic disaster and climate challenges, to attract public and private financing, to enhance long-term resilience. And we're also exploring further collaboration with India to support research and development of low emissions technologies. These technologies will be critical to reducing global greenhouse gas emissions while ensuring economic growth and transition to a clean energy future. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow I will have the opportunity to meet with a number of key Indian counterparts, including holding, as I said, the Foreign and Defence Minister's inaugural 2 plus 2 meeting. This inaugural meeting demonstrates that our partnership is stronger than ever. It's a key commitment under the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. On defence and security, we have made substantial progress in the first year of our Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, particularly to strengthen interoperability under our mutual logistics support arrangement. 
Australia participated in the past two iterations of Exercise Malabar. The Oz Index bilateral defence exercises are currently underway in the Northern Territory. And we look forward to having India participate in Exercise Talisman Say Bassoon and in undertaking more complex bilateral activities and exercises. Our economic cooperation also continuing to grow. The pandemic has reminded us of the importance of economic liberalisation, both in terms of the rules that govern trade flows and the infrastructure that supports our supply chains. It has been a timely reminder of the importance of building resilient supply chains between trusted, reliable trading partners. It's essential, given our reliance on these supply chains, to move medical supplies and food around the world, to protect livelihoods, and essential to kickstart our economic recovery. We also recognise that India is on a trajectory as a global manufacturing hub, as well as a key market for emerging technologies. We want to work with India to achieve this ambition, including importantly, through secure supply chains of the critical minerals that are essential to the technologies on which our future economies will rely. Phones and computing, batteries, powerful magnets, semiconductors and advanced materials. And while the pandemic has disrupted key areas of engagement, such as education, we are working hard to get Indian students back to Australia as soon as possible. I'm also pleased to report that Australia's Trade, Tourism and Investment Minister, my colleague Dan Tian, and Commerce Minister Goyal have instructed officials to work to an ambitious time frame for striking a trade deal. We're working towards an interim agreement as an early outcome with a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement to follow. This will be welcome and important news for Australian and, Ind and Indian businesses looking to diversify and grow their markets. It's also a vital vote of confidence in the rules-based international order for which India and Australia are long-term champions. There are so many different aspects of our partnership that I can't canvas all of the work that we're doing in the time I have this evening whether in defence or maritime or climate change or critical minerals, in education, in health, in science, in space, in agriculture, in film. But I do want to highlight one common thread that runs throughout our partnership, and that is the central role of technology. India is an emerging technology superpower, and it's easy to see why. Projections tell us that half of the next billion internet users will be Indian, half. Record foreign direct investments have been made in India's technology sector during COVID-19. India has more than 60 unicorns and over 340 startup incubators. India is also a leading source of trusted technical talent globally. And India will be a leader in technology rules, norms and settings into the future. Australia, again, is a natural partner in this space. Not only do we share common values, Australia also brings to the table an advanced technology sector with researchers and experts at the cutting edge of critical technologies, in particular 5G, but also in AI, in quantum, in 6G and beyond. Technology presents significant economic and innovation opportunities, but it will also be the key theatre of 21st century competition. Australia wants to work with India to ensure the next generation of critical technologies is shaped by standards and rules that uphold and protect our shared democratic values and promote human dignity, that support economic growth and development and innovation, and ensure our technologies are secure and resilient and trusted. And to deliver on these priorities, I'm also pleased to announce today the opening of the second round of grants under the Australia-India Cyber and Critical Technology Partnership. Following on from our successful inaugural grants round earlier this year, we're seeking high quality proposals from experts in India and in Australia. 
they will work together on projects to advance our shared interests on frameworks, standards and best practices for critical technologies like AI and quantum and next generation telecommunications. We believe this investment will help shape a global technology environment that meets Australia's and India's shared vision of an open, free, rules-based Indo-Pacific region. Friends, the threads that bind our two countries have been meticulously woven through a long and shared history. Our communities, are deeply connected. The Indian diaspora is amongst the most successful and integrated migrant communities in Australia, and their contribution to our country is warmly and immensely valued. And our countries are working together, bilaterally, trilaterally, through the Quad, multilaterally, to realise the opportunities that our region offers, and to respond to the many shared challenges that we face. We have seen significant growth of the Australia-India relationship. And I thank my friend Jai for helping us achieve that. As India marks its 75th year of independence, you have much to celebrate. 2020, 2022 is shaping up as a celebration of India and its rightful place in the world. We also look forward to celebrating 75 years of relations with independent India over the course of the next year and continuing to strengthen our cooperation and enduring friendship. I'm confident that together we'll recover from COVID-19. We'll continue to build a region that is peaceful and prosperous and secure and continue in the proud traditions of our ancient and modern partnership. A strong Australia-India relationship is good for our two nations, but it's also good for the wider region. By working in partnership and with our friends and allies, we can sustain a system of rules that makes our region more secure, generate the kind of dynamic economic progress that makes our region more prosperous, and create the vital diplomatic threads that will make our region more stable in this time of disruption and uncertainty.